जी डॉक्टर्स टुडे आवर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज स्केलेटल मसल रिलैक्सेशन सो डॉक्टर्स इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम मोर फोकसिंग ऑन द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ स्केलेटल मसल रिलैक्सेशन प्लस द यूज ऑफ द स्केलेटल मसल रिलैक्सेशन सो एक्चुअली व्हाट इज द स्केलेटल मसल रिलैक्सेशन एक्चुअली इट डिक्रीज द स्केलेटल मसल टोन बाय सेंट्रल एक्शन और पेरिफेरल एक्शन सो इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन द फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ द स्केलेटल मसल रिलैक्सेशन बट आई एम मोर फोकसिंग ऑन द क्लासिफिकेशन सो skeletal muscle relaxer that is being classified into central muscle relaxant and peripheral muscle relaxant so we said the skeletal muscle relaxant broadly classified into the central muscle relaxant and peripheral muscle relaxant so how to recall the drugs that are coming under the class of the central muscle relaxant for that we have a drug that is c m r that is being shown over here c m r so the drugs that are coming under the class of central muscle relaxant for that we have a drug that is c m r So from the C we have a carisoprodol and chlorhexazole. And from the M we have a methylcarbamol and methylcine. We are asked for the receptor. Acting drugs increases the gamma RG transmission. So in this class, we have two important drugs that are basically. Benzo is a benz and diclofen. So it is worth noting the drugs that are coming under the class of the central muscle relaxant for that we have a drug that is CMR. So from the C it stands for the carisoprodol and chloroxazole. From the M we have methylcarbamol and methylcine. Where R stands for the receptor acting drugs increases the GABA RG transmission. So in the category of this we have two important types of drugs that is benzodiazepine plus baclofens. So this is all about the central muscle relaxant. But now if we see the peripheral muscle relaxant, the peripheral muscle relaxant is being broadly classified into two types drugs. acting upon the neuromuscular junction the drug that act on skeletal muscle directly so it is worth repeating the peripheral muscle relaxation broadly classified into drugs that that acting upon the neuromuscular junction and the other category we have a drug that act on skeletal muscle directly so in this class we have only drug that is basically dantrolene so the dantrolene is the only drug that is coming under the a uh, class of the peripheral muscle relaxant that act on skeletal muscle directly now if we see the drugs that acting upon the neuromuscular junction so it is being broadly classified into three categories the drugs acting upon the neuromuscular junction classified into three categories that is drugs acting upon the neuromuscular junction classified into the depolarizing blockers
nine people in the rising black holes. And others. So we said that the drug acting upon the neuromuscular junction broadly classified into three important types of classification that is depolarizing blockers, the non depolarizing blockers, and the category of other. So, in the category of other, we have only drug that is botulinum toxin A. Botulinum toxin A. Now, for the depolarizing blockers, we have a mnemonic that is SD. S stands for the succinylcholine, D stands for the data methodium. Now, if we talk about non depolarizing blockers, this non depolarizing blockers is being classified into three further types that is, short acting. Intermediate acting and long acting. So it is worth noting the peripheral muscle relaxation is broadly classified into the drugs acting upon the neuromuscular junction and the drug that acts on skeletal muscle directly. In this class, we have only drug that is dead for you. And the category of the neuromuscular junction drug. Uh, that is being classified into the depolarizing blockers, non depolarizing blockers, and others. So, in the category of other, we have botulinum toxin A. Now, if we see depolarizing blockers, we have two drugs that is succinylcholine and decamethonium. And non depolarizing blockers is being divided into short acting, intermediate acting, and long acting. Now, we will explain the non depolarizing blockers in Zoom. So up till now, we said that non-depolarizing blockers is being divided into short acting, intermediate acting, and long acting. <coughs> so we said no non-depolarizing blockers. That is being classified into short acting, intermediate acting, and long acting. Non depolarizing blockers divided into short acting, intermediate acting, and long acting. So, in the category of short acting, we have only drug that is. Mevacurium. Mevacurium is the only drug that is coming under the category of the short acting non depolarizing blockers of the skeletal muscle relaxer. Now, if we talk about intermediate acting, so far, dear, we have a trait that is called V. So, what is the trick to recall the intermediate acting drugs? So far, dear, we have a trick that is called V, where every single alphabet will correspond to a particular drug. So C stands for the Cesartracurium, A stands for the Intracurium, R stands for Rapacuronium plus Rocuronium, where B stands for the Bcuronium. So, so what is the drugs that is coming under the class of intermediate acting drugs that is C, A, R and B where C stands for the Cisatracurium, A for Atracurium, R stands for Rapacuronium plus Rocuronium where B stands for the Vicuronium and at the last we have a long acting drugs for that we have a mnemonic that is BP, BP like this player, this player so for this we have a TTC drug and doxa curia and P stand for the pipe curonium and pain curonium. So the drug that is the lung acting 
90 polymerization blockers for date we have a trick that is DP DP like display display so we are this uh, there is 2D and 2P so for a single D we have a DTC uh, drop and the drops are curium we have P stand for the pipe curonium plus pen curonium so that's all about the classification of the skeletal muscle relax and now we are talking about the uses so up till now we cover the classic classification of the skeletal muscle relaxant with a certain and important tricks. Now we are talking about certain important uses for the skeletal muscle relaxant. So in order to memorize in order to memorize the uses of skeletal muscle relaxant, we have another trick for it that is CMR. Doctors, as we discussed earlier, that we have a central muscle relaxant, we have a peripheral muscle relaxant. So, for the usage, you have to remember the CMR that corresponds to the central muscle relaxant. So, the uses of the skeletal muscle relaxant, if we talk, in, talk about it, so the most important uses of the skeletal muscle is it is mostly it is prefer and CNS disorders. Associated with spasticity. So, the most important use of the skeletal muscle relaxant is that it is mostly uh, it is used as the CNS disorder that is being associated with the spasticity, like and multiple uh, sclerosis and cerebral palsy and all these conditions. We mostly prefer the skeletal muscle relaxant. The answer for the Manipulation and orthopedics is also one of the important use of the skeletal muscle relaxant. We are asked for the relieving muscle spasm that includes the tetanus, trauma, tension, and all these such, such conditions. So what is the use of the skeletal muscle relaxant for that you have to remember the trick that is CMR where C stands for the CNS disorders associated with spasticity like and the condition of the multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy. Now M stands for the manipulation in orthopedics, we are asked for the relief muscle spasm like in different uh, conditions like tetanus, trauma and tension. So doctors, in this lecture we cover the two important um, parts of this lecture of the skeletal muscle relaxant that is the classification of the skeletal muscle relaxant plus the use of skeletal muscle relaxant. Thank you so much.